Well, hey everyone, this is Don Smith, and I'd like to welcome you to the March Tips of the Month. And today we're going to do kind of a deep dive. I don't expect you to uh, learn everything I'm going to teach you, but what I want to do is kind of whet your appetite for uh, the power of masks. And you've probably, if you've been following me for any time, You've, you've heard me talk quite a bit about luminosity masking and the Tony Kuiper masking system. And I've been with Tony Kuiper on these masks since his TK2 panel. And you can see here, it's out, he's out now currently, and this has been out for well over a year, the TK7 panel. And I, I gotta tell you for $29, this is probably the biggest steal of any piece of software anywhere that you'll find. And you know what a huge fan I am of all the artificial intelligence software coming out from Topaz and Luminar and, and those companies and Nick filters and uh, On One and et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'm not dismissing the power of artificial intelligence. In fact, I know that's the future. It's where we're gonna to continue to go. But masking really is the ultimate, um, uh, how do I say it? The ultimate precision. It, it's very surgical on when we make a change or want to do something with our images. Uh, we first have to determine what it is we want to do, and then we go about doing it. And the masks really just refine that change right into the area that we want to do. Before I move on and show you my two tips, I'm on Tony Kuiper's page. And honestly, uh, here's the TK7 panel. I know uh, when I talk TK7 panels in my workshops, usually one of three things will happen. I'll get that blank stare like uh, they've never heard of it. Who's Tony Kuiper? What are you talking about? And that's understandable. Or I'll get that the deer in the headlight look, and then I, I, I will just see students' eyes roll up in the back of their heads of like, oh my God, I need a PhD to learn what they're teaching in this stuff. Um, or you get people that are into it and, hey, can you teach me more? So it's really kind of a broad spectrum. Uh, here's the thing with the TK7 panels. If you went in and did nothing more then just learned basic luminosity masking, your, your processing would improve exponentially. But you can see these panels have so much more to offer. So before I move on and teach you what I want to teach you, um, Tony has teamed up with a photographer out of Oregon by the name of Sean Bagshaw, who's an excellent teacher and does a whole slew of videos um, that helps you get up and running, how to install the panel. Uh, he, he just walks you right through it and he makes it very simple. So what I would, what I would recommend is instead of uh, buying the panel and trying to do it on your own, come down here and uh, start with this. If you're brand new to the TK7 and you want to get going with luminosity masks, and maybe after you see my video, you will, this is the one to get. Um, if you are an advanced student, um, this Luminosity Mask Masterclass, I'm still learning uh, by going back and watching this. And that's kind of the beauty of the Tony Kuiper system. Uh, you don't have to learn it all. You learn it in small increments and see if it fits in your workflow. Okay, so two pictures that we're going to discuss today. <clears throat> Excuse me. This first one is of... Bernie Falls, and this is located up in Northern California in Shasta County, and it's a beautiful little area. I made it up here a number of years ago, and uh, I, I wanted to come back to this image because I really liked it, but I never could quite get the color right. And, and I get a lot of people saying that they like the way my color looks in my process images, and Don, how do you go about doing it? Well, what I used to do, uh, this has just come out of Lightroom, just a couple basic adjustments in the basic panel. And then what I would usually do is I used to come down to this hue saturation and I would take this little targeted adjustment and let's say I wanted to bring up these orange leaves. I'd drop them in there 
and I would pull up, okay, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. I could go around and drop it into those trees. Um, it's a good way of doing it, but I found that I wanted to take it a step further, and what if I was to put that hue saturation and control it through a mask, I would have the oomph control. Okay, so I have already gone through and I've done it. And here's what the final result would look like. And see how it's much more subtle than what I did before, where I was just tugging on each slider. So let's go through. I'm gonna, I've closed this up in a group and I'm gonna go through and just try to recreate what I've done. Now, when you open up the Tony Kuiper panel, you're gonna have basically this TK7 Go panel. And this is broken into three areas. This is where you're gonna choose how you wanna make your mask. Um, again, this is something Sean Bagshaw will walk you through. Then I can modify my masks and then I can output my mask. Well, I'm gonna do all the outputting on a hue saturation layer. So I'm only going after the color. And the color I'm going after is these leaves in the foreground here, this water back in here, and then these trees, which I think need a little bit of lightning and I wanna bring out the greens in them. Okay, so I've done three things. I've identified what it is I wanna do with my picture. Now let's go back and do it. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come in here to the water. Now, um, they, this is something kind of a little different that I've been playing with and I just wanna show you. This is called an infinity mask. We're going to create a mask based on color. So I'm going to click this, and as I move my cursor in, you can see it turns into an eyedropper, and also this color picker opens up. I'm going to just click down here in the water, and you can see that it kind of picks up that kind of blue. I'm just going to move it up a little bit more to make sure it knows that that's the blue I want. I'm going to click OK. Okay, and now you see the beginnings of a mask start to form around that color. Now again, for those of you who have never experienced a mask, I'm going to brighten up the whites. And I'm just going to take this slider and brighten them up. This is what I'm telling the mask I want to go after. This area in here, I can always paint that area back. So anything that's white is going to get 100% of the effect. Anything that's black is going to get zero effect of the mask. Anything that gray, and there's a lot of gray in this, will get a percentage of what the change is that we're gonna do. Okay, so I'm really kind of brightening this up. There's ways to modify these masks. I won't get into it. Uh, that's not really what this video is about. I just wanna whet your appetite. Now I'm gonna come down to output, and if I hold my alter option key and hover over any of these icons in any of these panels, you, it'll tell you what it is. So this creates a hue saturation adjustment layer. That's what I want. So I'm going to click that. And now you can see the hue saturation box opens up and I've got my mask. That's where we're going to target it. Okay. All right. Let me move that down. Excuse me. We're going to come back over to here. So the beauty of this, as I showed you before, I went and had to click on this targeted adjustment tool. Well, the mask, because we worked through the color picker, already knows the color, so I don't even have to do that. I can just stay in the master category, take my saturation, move it up a little bit, and I'm just wanting your eye to watch the water down in here. I can take the hue if I want to, and I can change it. I'm going to bring it out with just a tad bit more green, and then I can also play with the lightness of that water. Okay, so I really have ultimate control over that water. All right, so that's my first adjustment. Let's go down to adjustment number two here. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come up here to my infinity color picker. I'm going to drop it in over one of these leaves right there. Whoopsie, let's do that again. That kind of uh, switched on me. Let me come back here and right about there. And I'm even going to richen that up a little so I can pull that over a little bit darker. I'm going to click OK. And now I, you can see it's starting to select the leaves, but I want to help it along. So I'm going to tug on this slider here. And the more white I can give to the leaves, 
That's telling that mask, really apply it in that area. Okay, and this is all by feel. Uh, you can even move these around. I can take out a lot of the area and blacken it up that, that isn't that color. So I think this is a pretty good mask. I'm gonna come here, click again, and now uh, I'm in the master by default. It'll come up master. I don't even have to click into the color. And as I pull it up, you can see I'm just targeting those leaves. And it's again, you pull it up as much to taste as you want. I can try to lighten them up. And in fact, I think in this case, I'll darken them down a little. And that's pretty cool. Okay, last one I want to do, I want to get into these trees. So let's come over here. I'm going to just drop the eyedrop picker into the tree. Uh, I'll do it again because it kind of moved. Once again, I'm going to just bring it up a little bit more. You don't have to. You can just stay right where the eyedrop, eyedropper selects it. Click OK. And then I'm going to output it to a hue saturation mask. Okay. So, um, you know what? I'm going to trash this mask because I forgot one step. And those of you astute who have been watching this probably know what it is. I'm going to come back in. I didn't really modify that mask very well, did I? So click OK. And you can see it's selecting, but it's kind of in gray. And I want to, again, I want to bring that up. There we go. Now we're really kind of selecting the trees. And now I will output it to a hue saturation mask. And now as I pull that saturation up, I can really richen up those greens. I want to lighten those greens up a little in that area. There we go. And I think that's looking pretty good. I could even play up here with the hue of the color, but I think the hue looks pretty good. All right, so let's turn all of these layers off. That's where we began. That's where we finished. And I think it does a lot more targeted adjustment just to those colors than just using the hue saturation box on its own without a mask. Okay, so that's tip number one. Let's go over to our second image, and I'm going to have to turn this off. <laughs> uh, I have been working on it. This is a picture basically right out of the raw processor. Give me a second here. I'm going to select all of these and we're going to move them into a group. The, the beauty of a group is it, it, I, I'm clicking down here on this folder. Is it just when I reopen it, everything's in there, but it, it keeps everything nice and orderly for me. So I can turn that group on and I can turn it off. Okay. And I'm going to leave it off. And here's my picture right out of the, this is basically the raw file. I did nothing in Lightroom to this. So the first thing I would do is I would look and tell myself, Don, you've got to do an overall contrast bump to this picture. It looks pretty flat, right? Okay, so I could come down here to the bottom of the layer palette and I could bring up a curves, which uh, that's one way to do it. Or if you are into Tony Kuiper uh, panels, you, you can um, click right here and he's, whoops, excuse me, click right there and he's gonna give you all of the same commands that are down below the layer palette. So there's the curves, all right? And I'm just gonna do a basic, um, what we call contrast curve, where I'm gonna pull down on the shadows a little and raise up on the highlights. And that alone made a huge difference. Let's go, let's go back and turn that curve off. Turn it on. And remember, the beauty of being on a layer, I say this all the time, is you have an opacity slider. If you go too far, you can take it down, bump it into taste. But I'm just going to leave it up. So I think that's step number one. Step number two. This is something I used to teach you guys, and I still do. Um, I think this is a little bright on the corner. It's kind of tugging my eye, wanting me to come down there, and I don't want that. So I, I would teach to take the lasso tool, select it loosely, feather it. Maybe we only have to feather this, let's say 200 pixels. And then I'd go and grab a curves adjustment layer and I would tug down on it. 
but I just don't like the effect it's putting into this. It just didn't work well. So I think a better way is something that uh, is called frequency separation. And uh, don't let this term throw you. I'm gonna come down here to the bottom of this whole panel where it says TK. And you can see we have a lot of different actions Tony gives you. Again, this is a $29 tool, you guys. You get all this stuff. It, it, it'll, it'll take you a long time to learn it. But this one's cool, frequency separation. Watch what happens when I click. First, we get a Gaussian blur box. By default, it comes up 10 pixels. Just accept that. that nine out of 10 times, this works great. Now, what you see is it has split this picture into two layers. And one of them is called color blur. Let me take that off. And you can see without the texture behind it, it's just that 10 pixel Gaussian blur. But also there's a layer. So, uh, or excuse me, there's a layer for texture. So with the two on, it looks absolutely no different. But here's where the beauty comes in. And you can do this. I've been playing with both a brush tool and or a clone stamp. I'm gonna use the brush tool on this one. I'm gonna click B for brush, and I have to be on the color blur layer. So I'm gonna highlight that. B for brush. Now you can see when I move the brush in, it looks like a brush, but if I hold the Alt or Option key, it turns into that eyedropper again. And that selects the green that I wanna paint with. Now, Let's go up to our flow. I usually, let's start with opacity. Usually I start the opacity down around 30 and build up. And you can always go back and change these. The flow I'm going to take down to about, oh, maybe 15, 16, somewhere in there. Okay, I'm going to size that brush up and I'm going to start painting over. And I think what I'm going to need is I'm going to bring that opacity up. Let's bring it up to maybe in the 50s, and I'm going to bring the flow up. Let's go ahead and double that to about 29, 30. Now, what I'm doing is I'm not changing the underlying line texture at all, but I am darkening down with this green color. I'm just painting with color is all I'm doing, and the texture stays the same. So that's before, and that's after. And now that I've got that dark kind of colorish or, or that dark color of the green, um, it sort of takes your eye away. So let, let's turn this off, the frequency separation. See how that light area pulls the eye down? Now it just sort of pushes it away. Okay, so um, the next thing I would like to do is I would like to kind of bring out these yellows back in here on the tips of these little mounds. Uh, this was late in the day and it was kind of catching those highlights and I want to emphasize them more. So that's a hue saturation thing, right? But we're going to control it with the infinity mass. So I'm going to click. I'm going to move it in and find some of the yellowish area, maybe right up. Uh, let's come up in here. I think that's more pronounced right there. There you go. And um, I'm going to click OK. And this one, I definitely want to modify the mask. So we just want to get those mounds. Um, that's where I want that effect to go in. So I'm going to really bring those up to white. And then I'm going to just tug in and make the other stuff go black where I don't want it to go. And that's looking pretty good. Uh, masks are really just something you have to play with. And you'll get a feel for them. Um, now let's output it to the hue saturation. Okay, we've gone through this with the other picture. Now watch when I tug on the master slider. It's only going to affect those kind of reddish, yellowish areas. And look at, look at how I can just bring those up. And it's very subtle. I don't have to bring them up a lot. I just bring them up to taste. I can take the lightness down on them a little if I wanted to. Okay, I think I'll bring the lightness back a little bit. And at any time, I could come up in here and play with the hue to sort of suit my taste. I don't want to take that yellow look. I could move it over towards green and blue and take it out all together. So now I'm going to come back and turn that on and off. See how subtle that is? But it's, it's beautiful. 
All right, one of the last things I would like to do, and I don't do this on every image, believe me, is uh, add a vignette. And I used to go through Adobe Camera Raw and just use their little vignette tool till I started once again playing around with Tony's. And you can see, you can see I have some of these color coded and the way I did it, I would just right click and then I could just select the color and I like, you know, this, this sort of uh, pinkish, purplish, magenta, whatever color you want to call that. Uh, it just catches my eye. So let's run the vignette tool. And again, it's going to bring up Gaussian blur. Now look at the amount of blur it's going to want. 662.8, just accept that. And here's the layer mask that we're going to make the vignette out of. And Tony already sets the opacity for you at 50. So really, you just have to click and it's done. If you want more vignette, just, just scroll up more towards 100. Less vignette, you can, you can take it all the way off. I happen for this picture to just like, you know, right around 50. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Let's come down here and this is before. That's the raw file right out of the camera. No adjustments in Lightroom other than uh, lens profile. I do put that in on every picture. And just working with some masks in um, Photoshop. Look at how we've just made that really kind of beautiful. We've made it pop. We've made the colors enrich. And uh, I, I just love the photo a lot more. Now I can go back and certainly if, if I didn't like, you know, the color up in here, I thought it was overbearing or whatever, I could back it down. I, I absolutely love this image. And I think I will just let it be at that. So two really advanced tips for you guys. Um, I honestly think the first thing to do when you get into Tony Kuiper is just learn these basic luminosity masks up here and Sean Bagshaw again does a great job of uh, teaching all of this. Get his videos, they're awesome, but I hope this just gave you a sense. Um, you know, something you can add to your Luminar and those other artificial intelligence programs that are just absolutely awesome. Um, but you can do it right, all right here in Photoshop, and Tony does all the heavy lifting for you. You just have to kind of understand what it is you want to do and practice, practice, practice. Okay, so uh, I hope this has helped you out, at least whetted your appetite for what you can do with some of your images, and uh, I'll be back in uh, April talking to you guys again. We're going to actually get a couple workshops going next month, finally, up in Oregon with Gary Hart. Um, the uh, Oregon Coast Workshop in Columbia River Gorge, and finally get back out with our students and, and start teaching again. We've all missed it. So until next month, everybody, you take care.